Well, the first two, um, just from a, an, an, a true editing point of view, um, first off, the new interface just feels so much more fluid, so much nicer. Um, I, I continue to find like new special uh, little features that have been put into the uh, into the interface. Um, so from a the way the whole project works, the way the timeline works, um, the new project bin, I just really find these uh, thumbnails and this idea of being able to take the project bin, blow it up full screen, have nice really big thumbnails in the project, and you know just have really nice uh, look at, play back my clips right in the thumbnail, mark my endpoints, mark my out points, kind of messing around with some clips on my uh, MacBook Pro and I discovered that the engineers had added a uh, sort of physics in the two-fingered scroll. So using two fingers you can see how this has like really nice playback control. The other new feature is our new revised uh, trim controls. I've heard from many customers you know in the past that they felt our trim controls were kind of a weakness and um, this was something we took very seriously in this cycle. We've really gone through and looked at making sure everything is keyboard driven. Um, and we've added you know, all different types of special uh, keyboard shortcuts for switching between the different editing modes. Um, if I have an edit point like this, I can go into a loop around mode and I can use keyboard shortcuts to nudge these edit there's, um, there's a lot of different trim functions from a lot of different types of editing tools, even some, um, you know, some new ways of, of picking and choosing edit points. Um, some of this was kind of making this equal to our competitors, but we also talked with editors and said, no, I've always wished that this feature did some other things, and we've added that functionality. I start to show some of this to uh, Avid editors and uh, Especially that crowd, you know, the way trim controls work, they've always, uh, you know, really prided themselves on, on very good trim controls. And the idea of being able to trim different clips, have offsets, have audio trimmed at a different place in the video, uh, things like this, I start to show this and I, it, it hits a big smile from the Avid users, definitely. The other feature um, that I'm, I'm really impressed with is the idea of adjustment layers directly in the timeline. Um, so you can take and create a, uh, a new adjustment layer inside of Premiere. If you put it onto an upper layer and start putting effects into that adjustment layer, it will affect all of the clips underneath it. So I'll take this adjustment layer, select it, and go in and add like a fast color corrector, double click, and that begins to affect every clip underneath. Even as I'm adjusting this, you can see it does it real time, so I can just keep working. Now in addition, anything can actually be an adjustment layer. So if I create a graphic or create something with a transparency in Photoshop and bring it into Premiere, so right now this just comes in as a, a, a title. So here I'm just taking this, what is now just a, a title, and I'm going to turn it into an adjustment layer just by right-clicking on it. And now I can stack effects in here that will affect the underlying video. So we'll take a color corrector, we'll take a blur effect, and this would be something I would normally have to do in After Effects, but now I can actually take advantage of all the real-time capability in Premiere even doing things like change the blending mode on this so that it, you know, adds an extra level of the effect. So those are just some of the top features in Premiere that I think, um, especially this one just has so many creative options that, uh, you know, suddenly opens up all these different things and it even works with After Effects compositions. So I can make a star shape, and I'm going to show this in my sneak peek session. 
make a star shape in After Effects, drop it right on the timeline in Premiere, have it animate in After Effects to kind of spin and fly out, and then I can use the shape of that to put a color effect onto my video or put uh, other visual effects. Um, two other things that we've also done to help with workflows. Um, the first one is kind of a very hidden feature inside of Premiere. Um, when we were talking with a lot of our broadcasters, they said that uh, they break out a lot of the different editing functions so that they want to have like less experienced editors have a simpler interface. Um, so maybe three transitions, maybe dissolve, dip to white, dip to black, no color effects, no uh, page peels, sphere, swirl, whatever, all the crazy stuff, right? So built into Premiere Pro, there is actually a function that allows you to have a simplified user interface. Um, it involves writing an XML file that exposes or removes different features, different settings in the menus. Um, but we've designed Premiere so that the interface can be completely customized in that way. So some of the challenges that we faced um, adding SpeedGrade to the Adobe Suite um, had to do with um, the nature of SpeedGrade. The, the price point for SpeedGrade in the past was uh, roughly 35,000 US dollars. And so it was a very specialized tool, considered very, very high end. And so the workflow and the hardware necessary to run SpeedGrade initially was very limited. With SpeedGrade, the software for SpeedGrade is all written uh, to use a single graphics card, a single GPU. And if you were to do side-by-side -side comparisons with uh, DaVinci Resolve is really geared towards, it can use many GPUs in a separate breakout box. Um, we find that the performance with speed grade is actually extremely fast and can still do many, many layers of grading on 5K footage on one Quadro 5000. Um, so because it's all written natively using OpenGL, um, SpeedGrade was written before the things for GPU acceleration existed. It's all written natively for the graphics card. It's actually a very small program. The size is 30 megs. Um, and it just does an amazing job of working very quickly. The other thing we've done is our new Adobe Prelude software. Um, this again is designed for the types of workflows you want to organize all your assets, um, add in descriptive information about what is going on with the shots, and have that as information that in Premiere people can search on. So this tool was designed to be a simplified interface, basic controls for marking in and out points, rough cut editing um, that somebody like a producer or an assistant editor can, can start to organize a project. Talking with some uh, broadcasters, such as the BBC, um, they, for every show that, that they do in their, uh, their drama section, for example, they spend uh, a certain amount, they assign a certain amount of weeks on for produce an episode. And so they break it up in two parts. They say desktop edit and craft edit. And desktop edit is the organization, rough cutting, Craft edit is the final audio adjustment, final color grading, adjusting the effects. And um, they try and use desktop editing as much as possible because the craft editors, their time is very, very valuable. And uh, that's part of where Prelude also fits in the workflow is it can act as a simple desktop editing tool. Um, simplified version of Premiere could be used for additional desktop editing. And then final craft editing can use the full Premiere Pro interface.